Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of the Terraria Let's Play. Thank you as always for all of your wonderful support in the last episode, reaching just over 1,000 likes. So we smashed our like goal. Thank you so much. So I'll tell you what, why don't we go ahead and keep that on as a little bit of a like goal for the episodes in this series. If we can keep on hitting 1,000 likes, that would be more than enough to tell me that you guys are still enjoying this series and want to continue seeing more. Of course, if you're new around here, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my future content. But if you want to go one further, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs. Now, at the end of the last episode, we had the beginnings of the Goblin Army. They are still there. They are still at my base. I have simply walked out of range. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy. All right, well, this is going to go kind of interesting, isn't it? Oh, hey there, buddy. How's it hanging? Oh, no. The real issue, really, is... Oh, goodness me. Oh, the issue is going to be the archer dudes because they do a rather crazy amount of damage, especially if you manage to get a whole bunch of them in one big old swoopy. Oh, hey there, buddy. You want to die there? Yes, you most certainly do. All right, look at all the damage we're doing to these folks, though. <laughs> get riggedy riggedy wrecked there, folks. Oh, snappers. All right, so we're going to get ourselves a supply of spiky balls, a whole bunch of money, potentially, if we're lucky, we might even get ourselves a harpoon. That'd be kind of sweet. So let's see if we can do this without getting absolutely pulverized, because, uh, yeah, that'll be rather unfortunate, it has to be said. Oh, no, go away, you son of a gun. No, you're not killing me today, sir. You're not killing me today. No, 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 no. If I can do this deathless, I will be absolutely ecstatic. Because right now, ladies and gentlemen, I am well and truly getting some World War II style flashbacks from my Calamity Death Mode series, where I died more than 10 times to the same goblin army. Oh, no, I don't want that to happen again. So, yeah, my friends, we've just got to keep on going. We've got to have our dodging game on point. Let's try and prioritize these archer dudes. I think in terms of the top three most annoying goblins to take out, the number one most annoying one has to be the goblin archers. Second place is kind of a toss-up between this here goblin warriors and also the goblin mages. The rest of them are actually fairly easy to take out of the game. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one's more annoying, the mages or the warriors. I don't know, man. I might have to say the mages because, well, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like any enemies that go ahead and teleport in this game. In fact, they're incredibly annoying and I wish that they would just go away. But uh, yeah, sadly, they're in the game. They're here to stay. So we just have to go ahead and deal with it, don't we? Oh man, it is times like this. I really wish I had some jester's arrows because I would be able to do a crazy amount of damage. In fact, I can make some jester's arrows. So do you know what? To speed this thing along a little bit, that's exactly what we're going to go and do. Oh my gosh. Oh, why didn't I make this at the start of the event, eh? <laughs> oh, everybody's getting destroyed now, son. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Oh, my, my deathless status almost got freaking revoked there. Oh, goodness me. You know what I think would be a cool mechanic in this game is if the critical strike chance was 100% if you managed to hit a monster square in the head, like a proper headshot. Like, I feel like having good aim should be rewarded in this game. I really, really do. I don't think it should be a chance of having critical strike damage being done if you manage to hit a mob square in the head. I think it should be 100%, you know? Reward people who have good aim. Although then again, would that be a little bit overpowered? Would that be overpowered? I'm not entirely sure, my friend. It could be overpowered in some scenarios. But then again, I don't feel like you should be penalized for having good aim and still only having a chance of doing critical strike. Would it be cheesy of me to go ahead? Oh, goodness me. Would it be cheesy of me to go ahead and use the nurse? Hmm? Oh, God. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, God. They're even inside the ponds now. Ooh, okay. Ooh, this isn't very... I'm dead. Ah, oh, there goes that, my friends. There goes that. Ah, oh, that was a big mistake. I shouldn't have gone back to my base area. Well, at least we don't have ourselves a crummy spawn point inside of our house to the point where they could spawn campers. Uh, yeah. I think we're okay, my friendos. Let's just keep it going. We're 75% of the way through this bad boy now. And, uh, yeah, it's only a matter of time at this point. Oh, for goodness sake, man. <laughs> well, there well and truly goes our deathless episode, my friendos. 
Ah, oh, big sad. All right, come on. Come on. There's a small army of dudes here. And I know exactly what to use against these little bums. We go ahead and do a little bit of this. The reason why we died is because there's a small army of archers here. And that is like one of the most dangerous things to happen with the goblin army. You need to avoid that happening at all costs. Otherwise, they will basically machine bow you. Hey, there we go. All right, just got to take down the uh, final stragglers here. And we will just about be there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, goodness me. Again, a small army of these dudes. It's kind of nasty. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Is that it? Is that it? It may be. I think we did it. There we go. Goblin army out of the game. We did, in fact, get the harpoon, which is kind of nice, actually. Yeah. All right. Aside from that. Eh, it's just kind of, eh, it's a goblin army. There's nothing special about it. Not really. Not until you get to hard mode and you can start getting a bunch of uh, shadow flame weaponry, right? So, the good news about getting the goblin army out of the game is the fact that we can go ahead and look for the goblin tinkerer. I mean, it's not like we don't have a whole bunch of NPC houses that we made in the last episode, huh? And a little bit of a quick tip, probably the easiest way for you to go ahead and locate the goblin tinkerer is actually to take a hunt hunter potion. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a hunter potion. Do I have the ability to make a hunter potion? Ah, darn it. <laughs> oh, you see, the reason why you take a hunter potion down is because the goblin tinkerer would then glow green, and then you'd know there's a friendly nearby. So we're gonna have to rely on pure luck, which, as you guys know, I don't really like relying on luck. Not in the slightest, in fact. Goodness me. Oh, I was going to go ahead and do a fishing quest next, but unfortunately, the angler is not in the world right now. So, uh, that rather puts a spanner in the works, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Turns out, more people died in that goblin army than I first saw. Ah, well, never mind. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and try to find ourselves the goblin tinkerer. Yes, I think that'd be a nice idea. Be nice and productive with our time, huh? Let's see if we can get lucky here, my friendos. We're already zoomed out as well, so we should be able to spot the Goblin Tinkerer, hopefully, pretty easily. How to tell when it's daytime? The NPCs have started to spawn back in again. Still no sign of the Goblin Tinkerer, though, my friendos. I mean, to be honest, it's just got to be a matter of time, really, and, well, a matter of luck, probably, as well. Whoa! Look at how nice nice and fluorescent green this biome is. Huh? Well, it's not really a biome. It's just got special moss, hasn't it? And yes, don't worry. I saw the chest down here. We'll go ahead and see what it's got in just a hot second here. Still a sign of the goblin tinkerer, though. Oh, of course. Of course. It had to be the flag, didn't it? Well, the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is because this is like a fluorescent green biome, I am able to see just about everything there is to see around here. For example, I can see a detonator up there. I can see a life crystal to my right there, which I don't necessarily need right now. I mean, if there is ever going to be a good place to try and find the Tinkerer, I would say this is it. Oh, snappers. Oh, we can mine obsidian with a fossil pickaxe. Well, 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 I must admit, I don't think I knew that. Learning new things about Terraria, even now, after over 11 years of playing this game. It is absolutely crazy, isn't it? Just how much stuff there is to learn in this game. Even after so many years of playing, you can still discover new stuff. Hey! <laughs> Give me all the platinum. It all belongs to me now. Oh, yes. Lots and lots and lots. Fantastic. All right, there's a little bit more poo as well. I mean, I guess if we really wanted to, we can make platinum armor in this series as well. I mean, we do kind of have it going on in our Calamity series, but uh, who says we can't do it here too? I mean, at the end of the day, it is still one of the best ore armors you can get in the game. So, yeah, why wouldn't I do this? When you only just realize there's a hunter potion on the floor, Floor. Uh, yeah, I should probably go ahead and take it and see if I can't use it to my advantage to find this gosh darn tinkerer. So where is this pesky fella, huh? Go on, glow up green for me. Where are you? Hey, hey, Mr. Dude. Oh, look, mining shirt. I want to mine in a different piece of the mining armor. Come on, dude, be reasonable. Give me something different, eh? Oh, interesting. I've still got my hunter potion up. But the bound goblin is not showing up green. Huh. Or is it because there's like a torch behind him and that affects his ability to show up green? 
Like, is that a thing? I don't know. But hey ho, we found him at long last. That actually took way longer than I would have wanted it to. But oh well, we got there in the finish, didn't we, guys? We got there in the finish. So down we go. There he is. We have ourselves some stuff to get, don't we? So we've got the rocket boots. Very cool. The Tinkerer's Workshop. Very, very cool. We'll go ahead and take that as well. And the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that he should be able to find himself a house to live in. I think there's one or two of these still vacant, right? Uh, maybe I could put you in there. There you go. Statson the Goblin Tinkerer. Enjoy your new home there, Budski. There's only one bit of furniture that belongs in the same house as a Goblin Tinkerer, and that's a Tinkerer Workshop, so there we are. Alright, so can we go ahead and combine the Dune Rider boots with the Rocket boots to become Spectre boots? Is that a thing? Yes, you can. Okay, very, very cool. Hey guys, want to know something interesting? I am pretty dang certain that we've actually got more than enough platinum and bars to make ourselves the full platinum armor if we so desire. Look at that, 97 of them. Dang, dude, that's pretty significant, isn't it? All right, I mean, yeah, I could make it. Do we want to make it? Eh, why not? I mean, what else are we going to spend the platinum bars on, realistically? Uh, the only thing that springs to mind is platinum crowns for the slime crowns. But even then, how many times, realistically, are we going to take down the king slime, huh? I mean, up until we get the full ninja armor, perhaps? I don't know, man. Maybe until we get a trophy. All right, Billy, welcome back to the world, buddy. Let's see what you got. Caught in the tundra biome. Do we have... Oh, we do. We do have a little fishing lake in the tundra biome. All righty. Well, here's the pond we can do a little bit of fishing from. However, I am not 100% sure that it's big enough for us to not capture junk. So I think we're going to have to get lucky here, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm, I don't know. Is this going to happen or isn't it? We need the ping fish. Am I really about to go back to base just so I can get one sonar potion? Just so we can get a quest fish? Oh, no, there's a piece of junk. Ah, all right. So it's not quite big enough to the point where we won't capture junk. Really? I'm really, I'm actually about to go get a sonar potion just so I can get this quest fish done, huh? Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> oh, you're trying my patience today, Terraria, aren't you? First, you take a ton of time to spawn in the Goblin Tinkerer, and now you're not giving me a quest fish. What is up with that? Well, I didn't really want to have to use a sonar potion here, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to. Otherwise, I am 100% going to run out of bait before I get the pain fish, huh? Yes. Ah, well, it's going to be worth it in the finish, my friends. Do you know what the worst case scenario could be right now? Is if the pengfish came up on the sonar, but then the line snapped, but it also still used the last bit of bait. Oh, I would be so miffed. Don't do it, Terraria. Please, I beg of you, don't give me that amount of bad luck in one go. I don't think I can take it. <laughs> I am actually in awe, ladies and gentlemen. An entire sonar potion and still no sign of the quest fish. Well, do you know what? Fate doesn't want me to have the quest fish for today. So do you know what? I can't be bothered to do it anymore. So we're going to go and put our stuff away and do something else. The good news is I managed to capture a few crates. So I'm going to go ahead and open these bad boys up. And oh, wow, only two more bits of bait, huh? That's all you're going to give me, is it? Ah, well. All right, well, we've got an extractinator, a shine potion. Eh, all right, stuff that isn't too bad, to be honest with you. All righty, guys. So let's just check something out here real quick. We've got the Spectre boots. We actually have an aglet on us already. The only missing accessory here is the anklet of the wind. So we have 10 minutes worth of Spelunker potions. Do we have the ability to make more? Uh, yes, we do. Okay, I might make a couple more in which case, because ladies and gentlemen, I think we should go for the Frost Spark Boots, all right? I think that would be a marvelous idea. In fact, to be honest, we've also got Gravitation Potions as well. <gasps> Dudes, there's so many things we could do. We could get ourselves a balloon, maybe make a cloud and a balloon. We could get ourselves the Anklet of the Wind and be able to make ourselves the Frost Spark Boots. 
Oh, dude. So many cool things. Right, you know what? We are going to begin with the gravitation potion. So, how's about we do a little bit of zoomy zoom action and uh, we're going to get this thing on the road. Come on. Let's see if we can find our first island before any harpies spawn in. Because when you get harpies spawn in and a small army of them on you, it becomes rather difficult to avoid them and their attacks more to the point. Oh, goodness me. All right, come on. Come on. Oh, it's right here, in fact. All right, well, at least we have a sky lake. That's actually pretty pog, if you ask me. We can go ahead and do a bit of sky fishing, if necessary, for a fishing quest. Now, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, because this is only a small world, it means we are only going to get, what, maybe a maximum of two, maybe three proper sky islands at a push. Come on. Come on, I'm hoping for three. I'd like a Star Fury. I'd like the balloon. And maybe the wings as well. The fledgling wings. Oh, almost forgot about those bad boys. Oh, ho, ho. all right. What have we got in here? Oh, there's the Star Fury. Beautiful. Oh, well, there we are, my friends. Edge of the world. So back to the middle. Uh, wow, that really didn't take a long time to explore all that. Uh-huh. All right, well, uh, we might as well use a fresh grav potion. And uh, let's carry right on with this thing. Come on. We're looking for a balloon and the fledgling wings. Ah, oh, hell yeah. All right, we've got ourselves another island here. And this one has the fledgling wings. Well, okay then. Don't mind if I do. Is there a possibility of one more Sky Island being present in our world? I'd be so happy. I really, really would. Come on, Terraria. Give me this. You've given me really crummy luck so far. How about a three Sky Island world? Oh my goodness, it actually is. Oh, you are the MVP right now, Terraria. Thank you. Oh, right, I gotta be a balloon, right? Yeah. Fantastic! Now, I'm pretty darn sure there's not going to be any more Sky Islands. However, that's not to say there aren't going to be any more Sky Lakes. So, how's about we see if we can get lucky here? Oh, no, we're just about hitting the ocean here. And, yeah, I think once that uh, compass gets to 4,000 units to the east... Yep, there we are. Edge of the world. All right, well, that was a fruitful endeavor for once, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and make ourselves a cloud in a balloon, shall we? It's going to be a blizzard in a balloon this time as well. Beautiful. Oh, it's a good one as well. Menacing. <laughs> All right, so the next thing to do in today's episode to really, really put the icing on the great accessories cake is for us to find ourselves the anklet of the wind in the underground uh, jungly jungle. And it looks like we've got a proper entrance to go down here as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this adventure on the road. We are heading to the jungle. We have Spelunker potions, iron skin, and regen, which I would consider like the holy trifecta of exploring. So yeah, let's get ourselves over to the jungle with a nice little amount of buffs. And let's see if we can get lucky in finding a ton of jungle shrines, because that is where our goal lies. I just realized something, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, I was originally going to try and go for a horseshoe balloon, but then I realized the only reason I'd be doing that is because then we'd be immune to fall damage. But then the fledgling wings, they also negate fall damage. So yeah, actually, we don't really need the horseshoe balloon. We are perfectly fine with what we've got. Right, let's get ourselves down here because there's already a chest of awesomeness. No way, bro. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? On balance, I think our luck has actually been kind of decent. We've gotten all the stuff we need from the Sky Islands, and we managed to find an ankle of the wind straight off the rip. Now that, my friendos, more than makes up for my crummy luck with that stupid pengfish. Ha <laughs> ha! So you know what? We're not even going to spend a second longer than we need to in the underground jungle. We're just going to get right back to base and make this freaking awesome accessory that we are now able to make. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, dude, I can't tell you how happy I am about that. I am absolutely chopped to bits. Like, really? Some really, really good luck. All right, so let's grab all these things out and let's pop down to the Tinker Station. There it is, the lightning boots. And there we are again, the Frost Spark boots. Ho, 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 ho. Ooh, our accessories have gotten a very nice overhaul. In fact, I'm pretty sure... Oh, snappers. All right, we can also make ourselves the tiger climbing gear. 
there we are. All right. Yeah. That's a nice set of accessories we have here now. All righty. I'll give the fishing quest one more go. It's only the humble bunny fish literally captured around here. So let's see if we can get this thing going and going strong, I hope. All right, I'm looking for a first time capture. Are we going to get it? Oh my God, we did. That's fantastic. Okay, our luck has very much come back from the depths, hasn't it? Look at that, some more sonar potions. So actually, in terms of uh, profit or loss, we are still in profit with our sonar potions. We used one for that stupid pengfish, but we got five more. So who cares, man? So do you know what, my friends? To finish off today's episode, what I'm actually going to do is try and go for King Slime. Now, of course, we've already taken down the Eye of Cthulhu, which is, of course, why we've got a Dryad here, and that was a free spawn, and I was very, very lucky to be able to take it down first time. Uh, but yeah, King Slime. We've not had that spawn in yet, so what we need to do is make ourselves a slime crown. So let's begin here with a regular crown, and then all we need to do is head over to a demon altar with the gel that we've got, and then we are good to go, my friends. Alrighty, remind me. Frost burn arrows. I'm pretty sure you have to use ice torches for those, right? Uh, oh, I was right. Nice. Ha, ha, ha. All right, all I need to do is go ahead over here, buy myself some more arrows, and then in terms of ranged weaponry, we will not be doing too bad whatsoever. So, here we are. There we go. All right, my friends, a heck of a lot more damage. Look at that, five range damage with the regular wood arrows, and nine with these, and also can cause frost burn, right? Down, down, down the chasm, and here we are, the slime crown. Only 20 gel required, of course. In the old days, it used to take 99 gel, and then I think it was reduced to 50, and then down to 20, like it is now. So, uh, yeah. Kind of cool, kind of cool. I'm very happy that they amended that. Yeah, archery especially. We'll take a banana split for right now. We'll take regen. We'll take a bit of iron skin. Uh, yeah. All right, I think we are ready, ladies and gents. So, do you know what? Let's just get straight on to it, shall we? All right, let's see what we can do. Let's begin by using the remaining bone javelins just for a little bit of lasting damage here. And then I think we're going to be good, my friends. So, yeah, there we are. Yeah, look at that. Doing 18 damage per tick. Very, very cool, my friends. All right. Now, we switch to the musket. Do a bunch of damage with this bad boy. Yeah, look at that. Look at that health bar going down nicely each time there. Yeah. All right. All right. Still got to be careful, though, my friends. Still a whole bunch of little blue slimy dudes who want to try and kick my little butt into the ground. I'll tell you what. It ain't gonna happen. My musket is absolutely ruining this kid. Oh, I, I kind of want to try out the demon row here, though, as well. Do we get the frost burn effect? Yeah, look at that. Two damage per tick. We seem to be the king of lasting damage here. Yeah. All right, come on, come on. This guy's almost done at this point, ladies and gentlemen. It has been absolutely no issues whatsoever. Really? Really? You're trying this thing on? It didn't work out for you, did it, son? We've got ourselves the King Slime Reddick. Unfortunately, we didn't get the Master Mode drop, though. So, yeah, we're going to have to go back and go ahead and take him down again until we do get the Master Mode drop. Because Master Mode drops, getting them all. It's one of the goals for the series. So here we go. Opening up here, we've got ourselves two bits of Ninja Armor, the Solidify, the Royal Gel, and, yeah, a couple gold coins as well for our troubles. So on that successful note, taking out King Slime, it's time to wrap up today's episode, but of course we need to do the comment of the day. Patrick says at some point you're going to have a lot of empty rooms after your NPCs move out across the world. Why not dedicate those rooms to each class, armor stands and weapons displayed accordingly, and chests with accessories and such. That is is a fantastic idea. So what he's saying basically is each of these rooms, I mean, potentially we could even make these rooms bigger after the NPCs leave. But yeah, we have one room, for example, for the warrior class. So we'd have an armor stand with the solar armor or whatever in there with a chest full of melee related accessories, maybe some item frames with melee weapons, you know? And then another room for ranger, another room for summoner, another room for mage. It's a great idea, isn't it? It really, really is. I mean, 
mean, it goes ahead and gives the rooms a fresh new function once these rooms have served their current function, which is just allowing NPCs to spawn in the world. So yeah, thank you so much for that comment there, buddy. Anyways, for now though, it's time to wrap up the episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, and of course you're excited to see more, please do be sure, of course, to drop a like. It would mean the world to me if you guys did that. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.